This is a 2004 Toyota Land Cruiser, and today we're going to review it. Hey folks, I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. And we are Two, two guys, guys in a Ride. And say, Nate, what are we taking a look at today? Today we are taking a look at Rob's 2004 Toyota Land Cruiser. That's right. But say, before we do, if you want to keep up to date with all the new cars, trucks, and SUVs, and you want to know how to uh, use all the technology that's built into them, plus you like cool collector car stories, take a moment and hit that subscribe button down below and ring that bell notification so you never miss a video. So what do you say, Nate? Oh, let's, let's go, go for a ride. ride. All right. All righty. Here we go. First, we're going to try acceleration. It's already in the higher gear, so it isn't as quick, but it pulls. It's, it's strong. It's, it's a steady pull. It's yeah. linear. Yeah. It's, it's not an AMG 63. No, it but it, kick you it has a linear seat. pull to it. But I, I can take this place as that AMG 63 Mercedes won't go. Yes, you can. <laughs> the quietness of the vehicle. Well, you know, it is a big box on wheels, and it's 16 years old, so you can hear some of the echo of the uh, the road. Uh, but overall, I mean, you can still talk well in here. Yes, we do can. have those mud and snow tires on this as well. It doesn't have yeah. street tires, which I think might be a little blasphemous if you put street tires on it. <laughs> On one of the most capable off-road vehicles ever made. Uh, they call these kind of like they refer to camels. They call these ships of the desert as well because they, they will go practically anywhere. Um, and they'll last forever, it seems. They have half a million miles or better. Uh, its biggest, uh, biggest enemy is rust. So if you can fight that, uh, it's going to hold up for you. Um, fit and finish. 16 years old and there's not a rattle or a squeak in here <laughs> you know this, this is not a very nice road that we're on uh it's, it's outstate and there's a lot of these uh rupture divots and uh patches and stuff so you may hear some booming and stuff like that that's being carried through but uh you know that's the road that's not the vehicle it's just uh it's really cool it's, it's, no, and that was a railroad track. Did you feel the duty to go back? I, I had to mention it because I knew you wouldn't feel it. No. <laughs> um, you know, it's just, uh, it's just comfortable and it rides. You got the height that you've got up here. You feel like you're just looking over everything. And, you know, and that's really cool because if you're using it on the trails, then you do want that extra height. Um, so, you know, so talking about then some of the safety features, you know, 2004. It, it didn't have a lot. It had dual airbags. It had side curtain airbags. It had ABS. It has traction control. It doesn't have the downhill assist or the open hill assist or radar cruise control. All those things just came along uh, lately. But what I, I do like about it, I thought it was really cool because I didn't remember this existed 16 years ago and it's hard to believe, but it has Bluetooth where I can connect my phone yeah. via Bluetooth. Now, as, as I recall, the Apple phone came out, the iPhone came out in 2007, like 2008, that. yeah, and this is 2004, and it has Bluetooth. Now you can't stream music; all it will do is connect your phone, but you can use voice command to dial numbers and to receive calls and things. So that's really cool for 16 years ago. We just take advantage. We just, or we just assume that those things have always been around, but they haven't. So I've strung this along as much as I can because I know Nathan absolutely loves driving this car yes, as I well, and, <laughs> and I do. But I'm going to pull over, and uh, we're going to play stoplight, ring around the rosy, whatever, and I'm going to let him hop in. Now remember, it's it's quite a ways down and yeah. quite a ways back up, but uh, <coughs> it's fun when you get in here. Oh, my turn. <laughs> I do like driving this. <laughs> Boy, they are they are tough. Yeah. They will definitely hit the million mile mark taken care of. Um, but boy, you know, like Rob said, the ride is, is, is I mean, it's smooth. Uh, up here on, on the road, you really just don't feel much for, the, for what the vehicle is. Yeah. The seats are incredibly comfortable. They're an eight-way power plus uh, two-position lumbar on both front and passenger and the driver's seat. 
uh, which is just incredible. I mean, this car came with navigation, you know, the backup camera that he mentioned, uh, which, which in terms of parking does make it much easier. Um, the, uh, all the buttons are still laid out in an area where you can control without moving from your position on the seat. And you do have ample control like over your uh, media stuff right on the steering wheel as well as your phone and your voice commands. So that's all right there where, you, where you'd want it. I'm back here chilling. I laid my seat back and Nathan will show you this in a few minutes. This seat, these seat back really, really reclined actually a little bit further than I would ever want. They, you could about lay down and take a nap in them. They, they, yeah, we'll show you that. But they, are, they really, yeah, they recline more than any other car I've seen. So this truck is definitely higher up, and so the assist handles, the grab handles, uh, both in the front and the rear, are a help to getting in, and you you want them. And uh, uh, but it's not overly difficult to get in and out. It is a little bit of a stretch to get up. But again, those grab handles uh, make it fairly easy. And it was an option from the factory to get the uh, running board package. Mm -hmm. uh, this vehicle did not come with them. You can retrofit some on there, but I like the pureness of the originality of it. I do too. And anything you hang underneath is less clearance. Yeah. So there's that to, there's that to keep in mind too. So yeah, just. Oh, so much fun to drive. <laughs> All right, coming up next is Rob's exterior review and my interior review. Stay tuned. The Land Cruiser is Toyota's longest running series of models and the second longest running SUV in production just behind the Chevrolet Suburban. Well, as of 2019, sales of the Land Cruiser totaled more than 10 million units worldwide. The first generation of the Land Cruiser began production in 1951 as Toyota's version of a Jeep-like vehicle. The FJ40 two-door Land Cruiser is even rumored to pay tribute to the Jeep by its reference to the J in its name. The J60 series, the bigger one, was introduced in 1980 and it was given a variety of creature comforts like air conditioning, a rear heater, and an upgraded interior. By 1981, Toyota Land Cruiser sales topped 1 million units. The J80 series launched in 1990, and in 1998, the J100 series launched, and this particular body style and setup ran in production from 1998 to 2007. The 100 models were fitted with a slightly wider chassis independent front suspension and two new engines. The change to independent front suspension was a first for the Land Cruiser and it was made in combination with rack and, peering, rack and pinion steering to improve on-road handling. This is a 2004 Toyota Land Cruiser Series 100 and it's the 4x4 base trim and when brand new it had an MSRP of $54,725. It's presented here in natural white and it has an ivory leather interior. Now, it's powered by a 4.7 liter double overhead cam 32 valve V8 engine producing 235 horsepower and 320 pound foot of torque. It's driven with a five speed automatic transmission with, uh, with overdrive. It has a second gear start capability, has power mode, and it has a manual transfer case. Now, out front, we do see the Aero Composite fully automatic halogen high and low beam headlights, and they do have the daytime running lights. Down below, these are halogen fog lights. And it does have, and I'm gonna call it kind of a silver pewter colored uh, body uh, front bumper, and it does have one front tow hook. It also has the matte gray grille with the chrome Toyota emblem and chrome grille surround. Up top, it does have variable intermittent windshield wipers. Let's take a look around the side. This uh, does have the uh, a double wishbone front independent suspension as I was talking about a minute ago and it does have gas shocks and a torsion bar and multi-link rear suspension with coil springs and an anti-roll bar and because this is certainly an, a most highly capable off-road vehicle it does have skid plates as well. Now these are 17 inch aluminum uh, silver aluminum wrapped uh, wheels wrapped in P265-65-18 
mud and snow tires. It also has active track, automatic full-time four-wheel drive, and they are permanently locking hubs. It has a 410 axle ratio. It has ABS with traction control, and you have 12.2 front and 12.2 rear vented disc brake rotors. Now you do see it does have the pewter body colored side moldings. It has a power retractable antenna and it still works. I love it. You also do have the remote keyless entry on the key head and these are heated and powered door mirrors, but they are manual folding. You see it does have the matte black belt line and window trim and it does have the deep tinted side windows and up top there's a power slide and tilting glass sunroof and it does have the black roof rails and rack up top. Let's take a look around the back. Okay, you see up top, it does have the high mount third brake light and you do have the black roof wind deflector. It has a fixed heated rear window with a lift up tailgate, has an intermittent wiper and you see the black Land Cruiser nameplate right here. Now it does also have a backup camera and it does have a gray bumper skid protection strip on top of that pewter colored step bumper. And it does have a fold down lower tailgate. Plus you see below it does have the receiver hitch with the seven pin to four pin trailer light adapter. And it does have two rear cargo hooks. Now, this is my favorite part. Here we go. Max cargo behind the first row, 90.8 cubic feet. Maximum cargo behind the second row, 39.2 cubic feet, and behind the third row, which I've taken out, is 20.8 cubic feet. Floor length to the front row to the back sill, 63.6 inches. Second floor to the back, 46.3 inches. And cargo height area here, 41.5 inches. Belt line width, 51.9 inches. Wheel housing width, 42.6 inches. You can get a lot of stuff in this big box on wheels. Now, a few of the safety items, wasn't a lot back in 2004, but you did have brake assistance, you got side impact beams, electronic stability control, ABS, driver and passenger airbags, as well as side curtain airbags for the first two rows. Um, packages that were available on this Land Cruiser, the roof rack and running boards package, which I don't have the running boards, I'd also had a uh, convenience package, and then there was a gold package that I believe was the uh, the emblems. They were they were all in gold. I'm kind of glad they stuck with the silver because that was that was then, and now that'd be a little over the top. So, again, my favorite part back here is this sit down tailgate uh, area where you can sit and watch a game, you can sit and watch a race, or you can just sit and have a picnic on the trail. Let's talk next about the dimensions. Front track, 63.8 inches. Rear track, 63.6 inches. Overall width, 76.4 inches. Length, 192.5 inches. Height, 73.2 inches. Wheelbase, 112.2 inches. And it has a minimum ground clearance of 9.8 inches. Turning circle, 39.6 feet. Approach angle, 31 degrees. Breakover angle, 24 degrees. Now it has a curb weight of 5,390 pounds, max payload of 1,470 pounds. It can tow 6,500 pounds, and it has a fuel tank of 25.4 gallons. Now let's talk about, excuse me, mosquitoes are out here. Let's talk about safety. Well, weirdly enough, it's never been rated by the National Highway Transportation uh, Administration or IIHS. So performance, zero to 60. 8.4 seconds. Not bad for a big, heavy vehicle. Appearance, big, bold, conservatively styled. I like that. Dependability, basic warranty, three years, 36,000 miles. Powertrain warranty, six years, 60,000 miles. And then finally, economy, 13 city, 17 highway. Again, not bad. So, in summary, the Land Cruiser is a versatile, rugged, and comfortable everyday family vehicle for many people. As plush as the Land Cruiser has become, it is as capable as ever with steep approach and departure angles for trail driving along with an optional height adjustment suspension, automatic height adjustment suspension. The V8 delivers 80% of its peak torque at 1100 RPMs, 
burnishing Land Cruiser's towing performance and off-road chops. Give us a like, leave a comment, and click on that subscribe button down below. So, what do you say, Nate? Take it away. All right, stepping in inside the Land Cruiser, um, you've got uh, a little color combination here with the gray and the tan. And then over here, you've got uh, auto up and down all four windows, plus they lit up. The little tips lit up at night with the lights on. Your window lockout, and then your lock and unlock buttons. And then you had a physical uh, unlock lock right here by your door handle. You do also have two of your speakers in each of the front doors right here. And then some nice storage right in here. That's, you know, that's about a half a hand deep. Now, on the driver's seat and the passenger seat both, you have eight-way power and a two-position lumbar. The seats themselves are in a very good shape for the year. No major cracks or tears or anything on them. And I do like how they put the, uh, the uh, armrest right here. And they're the ratcheting kind, so if I ratchet like this, it's, it actually stays there. And then I can just push it all the way up and bring it back down. And then you would bring it up to the height you want and stop. And then it locks in place. Okay. Down here, of course, you do have your typical foot rest and your foot pedals here. And then you do have a little air vent down here below. And you had your fuel release, uh, your, your fuel door release right here, your trunk release right here. And then coming up. You had um, your rear vents closed and open, and then you had your mirror controls, and then you had your right vents open and closed, and then, of course, you had your trash control system on or off. Now, this vehicle came with a power tilt and telescope wheel, which I think is just awesome. And then, of course, this little dial up here was your bright and dimness for your dashboard lights. All right, well, let's step inside. All right, it is not a push start. <laughs> it's a key. So that's, that's what a key looks like. I really like how when you start it up, it's got the, the, the easy entry exit system. So the steering wheel came down and came out. Uh, that, that's just really nice. Then when you turn it off, the steering wheel goes back in, which is, which is really nice. All right. Um, so, man, uh, all right, over here, you have all analog gauges. So you've got your battery, you've got your uh, fuel gauge, you've got your speedometer along with a digital odometer. So it has a, 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 the regular odometer and then if you push it then you get a trip A and a trip B. And then over here you've got all your gear selectors, uh, indicators, and then you've got your RPM. And then over here on the far right you've got your uh, oil pressure and your uh, engine temperature gauge. Moving back on the steering wheel, um, you have got volume up and down. You've got change between like CD tracks. This does have a six disc, six disc CD player on it. And then you can change the mode. So switch between, you know, the radio AM and FM and um, CD. Over here on the right, you had your phone off, phone on, and then of course your voice command. Now, this I like. This is, you know, the traditional Toyota cruise control that hasn't changed in eons. Uh, that's, that's right there. This did have auto lights. So over here on the left, you had a, on the stock switch, you had a way to turn on your auto lights. Um, and then, you, of course, you had fog lights as well. And those, that control is right over here. And then over on this side, of course, you had your intermittent uh, wipers and your, and then also your rear wipers and then, of course, your wash windshield washers, front and rear. All right, moving on over to the center, uh, before we get to the infotainment screen, uh, coming down here, you've got your hazard buttons. This was your antenna button to raise your antenna up for the radio or down. This was to lock um, your differential. Over here, you had the cassette player. Um, <laughs> if you don't know what that is, uh, well, we had a little cassette that would go right in there and would play. Um, so you had, of course, power volume, so you could track AM, FM, tape, or disc. And then you could change channels or the disc number right here. You got a scan button. This was an eject button. And then, of course, a physical tune button. And then, of course, power volume. 
So over here you had the rear defroster, and then you had the rear AC on or off, okay? And then you had the defrosting mirrors, which you could turn on or off. All right, up here just below the infotainment screen, of course, you had your digital readout for the outside temperature, um, inside temperature, what it's set at, and then, of course, your clock. And what I like is if you want to reset the clock, well, there's three buttons right there for you to do it. They're all physical. All right, so on the infotainment screen itself, this is a roughly about a five-inch screen diagonally. And then um, you had, of course, a whole bunch of physical buttons to get to here and then the rest of them down here. So this one up here was, of course, your map, okay? And it would show you, um, well, like a navigation map. Um, you would plug in your destination by clicking on this, and then you could grab, you know, pick a point of interest or an address or something. The menu button um, would just go to the menu for the navigation. Um, and of course, you could select whatever you wanted here, setting up resume guidance, volume my places all right if we go to the audio button then you know you had your limited choices am fm tape or cd um, but you had your different uh, radio station presets here you could go to sound right here so it was a touch screen which i think is really cool you could adjust the front rear i mean all this looks familiar from modern cars all right uh, we could press ok uh, and, of course, what was on here would change depending on if you were uh, on tape or if you went to a cassette tape, it would just say tape at the top. There was no digital controls for the tape. And if you went to disc, then you would have, you know, track one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then, of course, your sound button. Okay, so one of the neat features on, the, on this car was that on the radio, if you want to go to a car wash, but you want to continue to listen to the radio, you would use this button here to manually lower the antenna to its lowest point where you could still got reception right there and then it would you could still hear your radio in the car wash and then when you were done of course you'd hit the button and you would raise the antenna again now i just think it's amazing that antenna still works after 2004. i mean rob hasn't done anything to that other than clean it you know but it it, it functions it's just amazing okay climate control buttons down here so what you had physical uh, in terms of physical buttons was a temperature control, auto AC on or off, you could turn the whole system off, you could turn the front defroster on, um, you could push and go to a climate screen where you could adjust more things, and then you had a recirculatory or fresh air. And if you press the climate button, of course, then you control your fan speed, and then with AC on or off, and then the different modes. Okay, um, You didn't have any control over the rear AC. So the rear AC, the only control you had was either it's on or it's off, and then the people in the rear would control it. Okay, moving down. Down here, you had, of course, your ashtray, and then you had a 12 volt outlet right here, and then this over here was another 12 volt outlet. So dual 12 volt outlets in the front. Coming over here was your, of course, your uh, high or low for four wheel drive. And then you had a little bit of uh, storage right here. Uh, would have been, uh, I suppose, maybe, for, I don't know what, smaller cell phone or something to sit in there. Um, coming back, you have heated seats. So you had low or high settings. And of course, they, they light up at night. And then, of course, you had your gear selector, which is a gated uh, shifter. So over here on the left, we have a traditional power button that, if you're familiar with Toyotas, uh, has been on there for a long time. Uh, and it gives you a little bit more acceleration. But what I like about this one is the second gear start button. And if you engage that, uh, when you're at a dead stop and start, it'll start the vehicle out in second gear, so which is super good for uh, snow, ice, mud, sand, you know, all that kind of stuff where you don't want to uh, make the tire slip. So, and it definitely works and makes a difference. All right, moving on back here, of course, you do have a cover that you could close, but this is a dual cup holders here. I also think it's interesting to look at things that are older. You can This does hold everything, but it is not real deep. Modern cup holders are quite a bit deeper than, than that is. And then, of course, you have your traditional uh, handbrake right here. Moving back to the center console, you have 
two levels in here. You've got the top one, which is a smaller storage tray, uh, no additional plugins or anything, but you got a small area to store things. But then if you pull this lever down, you get cup holders. And if you're and if you're kind of careful about it, you can pull this down and then supposedly that latches in place um but you can see it would it wouldn't take too much um for it to spill so and it would be hard to reach but it's thoughtful it's a cool idea um that they tried out and this even has a soft bottom to it i think it's pretty ingenious that down and i go down a little bit further i can open up the second storage compartment where you got fairly deep storage down here and then of course your six disc uh multi cd player Moving over to the glove compartment. Hey, you've got quite a good quite a bit of storage in there. It's it's not wide, but it's fairly deep. And then coming up here, you did have an auto dimming rear view mirror. You then up here, of course, you have your sunglass holder right here. And then you have your dome lights, which your reading lights. And then you have your uh, sliding uh, sunroof. This was a manual shade opening, but then you had the slide button and then the tilt button feature right there. And that all works really well. And then you had your three home link buttons. Over on the um, visors, okay, they were lit on both sides, okay? They're telescoping on both sides, plus you had this secondary visor to fold down. All right, well, let's step into the back and take a look. All right, so stepping into the second row, we've got some really interesting things. Uh, you know, on the door, uh, you know, it's pretty standard here. You've got, you know, your same color combination. You've got your auto up and down uh, window switch. You've got a little bit of storage right here. It's pretty deep. And then you have another one of your speakers. Hey, um, you got cargo netting uh, in behind both seats here. I'm going to climb in and show you some, some interesting uh, features. All right, starting in the center console. Okay. All right, so one of the interesting features in this car is the audio system in the second seat. So the rear passengers have two different headphone jacks, two different volume adjusters, and then you could turn the whole thing on and off. You could switch sources. You could... Uh, uh, change the radio station or the track on the CD and you could change um, the discs right here that's for changing the, the disc one to disc two okay then back here you had a pull-out cup holder right okay? which was ample size I like it that there's, you know there's actually a physical side to it there it's just kind of interesting okay and then on the seat itself um, this is a 60 40 split so your uh, center armrest here, you do have that. And even at this, you know, in 2004, this one was elevated, which was I just, I, I like that. It was, and it's a comfortable ride back here. It really is. The seats, when we showed you this, talked about this earlier, but the seats right here recline at an incredible level. I mean, that is uh, just about sleeping level right there. And, and both sides do that. Hey, now in terms of uh, knee room and headroom, the seats where I left it when I was driving, <laughs> I got like, you know, three to four inches. Headroom, my hand's almost not big enough to measure it. I mean, it's huge. Again, like five inches. Um, just uh, lots and lots of space and really comfortable. I like how the seats tilt up at the bottom right here. Uh, it's just very comfortable with a flat floor back here. Um, just a very, very comfortable interior right here. Now, there was a third row in here, uh, and that and those are jump seats, and they fold down from the side. Now, Rob's taken those out, um, but they were actually in really, really good shape. Uh, there was nothing wrong with them. It's just that he doesn't have a use for that jump seats, and and so he wanted more room for uh, storage for luggage. So, and you'll see that in the trunk. It's absolutely massive how big this thing is. All right, so I want to show you uh, the rear AC. So that is actually located right up here. And interestingly enough, it's a slider for the temperature controller. You had the high, you have low, you've got um, the different modes where it's blowing from. You can turn it to auto or off. And then, of course, you had air vents, you know, three air vents right back here for the third row. 
right? And in addition to the, the roof vents you have for the, the, uh, the second row of passengers, and then of course you had underfloor uh, vents as well. All right, let's show you how these seats fold up. All right, so to fold these is very, very simple. First of all, the tilt lever that I used earlier to tilt the seat, you grab that, seat comes down, then you grab this lever and pull it forward and lift from the rear, and the seat comes up. Now, what, what Toyota did here is the seats don't latch. So they knew that there might be an issue going down the road with things seats going backwards. So they actually, and we'll insert a picture here, but uh, they actually had the strap that hooks to here that would prevent the seat from falling backwards. And then it was the same for the jump seats when they were in. So overall, what a vehicle. Oh my gosh. To be able to find something like this in this good of a shape. Thanks for watching.